All right, guys, I believe we are live. So I am hashtag the tallest man in real estate, um, AKA Eric Jansen, and I'm an agent with Compass. I've been in the real estate industry for probably about three years now. I was at uh, Paragon before that. And then I was actually in the mortgage industry for five years in the early 2000s, leading into the 2007, 2008 debacle. And there's some similarities, but a lot of them are very different in terms of what's happening right now. So I wanted to bring my friends on, uh, Mark Harris and Ryan Leader, and they work at Cal Financial as mortgage brokers. And so I had some questions I wanted to talk to them about the market and a few other things. And uh, we'll do a little deep dive here for about 15 or 20 minutes. As we're recording this, just if anybody watches this on YouTube, um, this is April 2020, um, right during the middle of the shelter in place. So a lot happening right now. But um, Mark and Ryan, why don't you guys talk about your background and, and a little bit about Cal Financial. Great, Ryan. You want to start? Perfect. Yeah, my name is Ryan Leader, and I am with Cal Financial. I have been with Cal Financial and in the mortgage industry for, gosh, going on eight, nine years now um all the way from supporting initially some top one percent loan originators doing you know 100 million dollars a year to now uh, myself and mark running our own business uh together as business partners and uh lived here in the bay area gosh for since 2005 love playing golf and uh trying to just uh enjoy uh the positive things at the moment definitely a, a little different time for for our industry and, and life in general so. exactly and mark what's your background yeah so i joined cal financial uh, about four four and a half years ago when i partnered with ryan and before that i was in the medical industry so the uh you know i I've, I've been in the bay area a little over 20 years now and i've been flipping homes for most of my life i um, also have a side business of development where i do residential fix and flip so I've always been involved in the in the real estate world and when it was time for me to make a career change four years ago I decided to jump over into the mortgage business and Ryan and I immediately became business partners and we do run our own business with Cal Financial we're the only duo that we know in the business that actually work on all loans together so uh, it works out really well we can accomplish a lot with the two of us yeah and that's well that's one thing I've really appreciated about you guys is your team and how well um, you and Ashley and everybody follow up with all my clients so I just I really appreciate that because that's one reason why I sent them to you but you know one of the Thanks. questions that I get constantly from you know especially my friends and people I meet at open houses is what's the difference between a mortgage broker and your traditional lender let's say Wells Fargo or Bank of America so yeah. Mark, how would you answer that question when, you know, when I got those kind of people that are asking that? Yeah, and there's actually kind of three. So we'll start, there's the mortgage banker, the mortgage broker, and then there's a hybrid. And that's actually what Ryan and I are. We're a hybrid of that. So we are a mortgage banker. We have our own bank, American Financial Network that we work with. It's purely a mortgage bank, not a lending institution or a depository institution like the big banks. But um, we are a mortgage bank. And then um, we also have the ability to broker out. So we're a bit of a hybrid. And you know, there are pros and cons to everything. One of the pros of being your own bank is that we sort of get to make the rules. We have a lot of flexibility in what we do and, and uh, you know, we get to move things along and stay nimble. Um, one of the cons of being your own bank though is that you have a limited number of programs. So you offer, you know, just this lineup of programs that you have and if you have a buyer that falls outside that, you sort of can't help them. And on the flip side, being a broker, it's kind of the opposite. You have all these options that you could go to for you know, loan options, uh, but if you're brokering out, you're sort of at the mercy of the bank that you're working with. So you're not as nimble, you're not as quick. But um, when you combine the two forces, you know, what we have the ability to do is we can go to our own bank when, when the situation is right, and, and if not, then we can go and broker out. And because of our relationships with the brokers that we use, you know, we know who to pick and choose and where to pull them in. Um, but the other thing that we have because of that is we have backup options. So mm -hmm. you know, we often are the people that get called when one of the big banks, and we all know the big banks out there, I won't name them, but when there is a loan in trouble or falling through, we often get a call from the agent saying, hey, this bank is not performing now and they just told us they're not gonna close this, can you guys jump in? Yeah. But you know, we can do the same thing if we set up a loan and for some reason we have an issue with it, we can broker out and find another place to do it. So there are three options and it's uh, important for everybody to have relationships with, with 
all sorts of lenders to you know make sure that their business goes smoothly. Yeah, and especially which we'll dive into right now is you know with this market and things changing constantly. We were before we started the Zoom call, we we're talking about some of the things coming up. So, Ryan, can you touch a little bit on what's happening in the in the current market right now? You know, I know there was a spike in rates in, in March, and I, I believe they've come down a little bit. But um, and you're on a great conference call you're talking about yesterday. So can you speak to a little bit what's what's happening right now? Yeah, definitely. So we are in some interesting times and and lots of changes going on behind the scenes. But essentially, what's really happened over the last what month and a half now since this whole shelter in place has started is just a lot of background lenders trying to figure out what the heck is going on, how long is it going to last, and what oh, what's the overall impact going to be. Um, so rates are still low. There's no question about that. Across the board, uh, mortgage rates are very low. Uh, the difference between a lot of the rates is, is going to be, is the mortgage government backed? Mm -hmm. So uh, you have Fannie Mae, you have Freddie Mac, you have FHA, you have the VA, uh, all government backed mortgages. Um, but they do have a limitation to how, how big their loan amount will go. Uh, so generally in our high cost areas, that's about 765000 uh, for a loan amount. And then once we go over that, you jump into a jumbo mortgage or what may be considered a, a non-conforming mortgage. Um, and those are generally backed by the, the banks that provide them. Uh, so you have a lot of the big banks, uh, Wells and Chase and B of A and all those guys that generally are the biggest players in this market. Well, they've all kind of drawn themselves back at this point uh, to an extent. They're still doing loans. There's no question about that. Uh, but they've drawn themselves back to a space where they're not likely going to be offering these rock bottom of the barrel rates that were available a month and a half ago. Um, and they really are starting to look at where is their credit uh, score requirement thresholds? Where are their loan to value thresholds? So will they allow uh, borrowers to put less than say 20% down mm. um, and, and different factors just assessing the risk of, of how are we going to come out of this, uh, where our unemployment number is going to continue to go, and, and when will that start to kind of plateau out and, and hopefully head back yeah. in the other direction. And that, you know, and I, I get asked, I think anyone that's tried to predict everything that's going to happen in the next six months or years can be very tough and nobody can consistently do it. And, but one thing that I do think is a little bit different, and Mark, you and I were talking about this earlier today, was about that the loan to value, which is basically how much people have on their home versus what it's worth. So let's say you've got a million dollar home and you've got a $500,000 mortgage, your loan to value or your loan amount would be 50%, so 50% LTV. But um, it's very different than it was in 2007, 2008, where it's a little bit higher. Can you speak on that, what you're hearing on that conference call that you're on yesterday? Yeah, so you know, there are about 125 million households in America, uh, about 80 million of those are owned and um, somewhere in the 40, probably 40% 40 of those don't have a mortgage, right? Okay. So free and clear. But for those that do have a mortgage, you know, that LTV is staying right around 50, 53%. And so what that means is that people have extra equity in their home right now. And so it, there is an opportunity to continue to do refis. And I know people are really hung up on what the rates were a month ago and they were in the high twos and low threes. and. You know, now they're like, oh my God, they're in the high threes. I, I'm not going to refi. But, you know, the bottom line is this is a great opportunity to take some of that equity that's available. And, and if you can, you know, we're running up against situations with high unemployment. There is a little bit of uncertainty in the future. But the last thing we want to be doing is putting ourselves, if we're in home ownership, putting ourselves in a position where we don't have the ability to pay that mortgage or we don't have the ability to take out that equity down the road that we may need right now to get through this period of survival. So mm. it's a good time if you're able to refi, no matter what the rate is, is to just, I mean, you know, within reason, but the rates are still historically super low. And so to turn around and take some of that money out that you have and protect yourself. And, you know, I think that that would slow any damage that's going to happen like we saw in 2008 where people just couldn't recover because they didn't have money to take out at the time. And that, you know, and that brings up a question I just wanted to ask you guys about too, is that, you know, there's a lot of, let's say you got 50% loan to value and, um, you know, in your home 
and you want to you know build up a little buffer sometimes it's not advantageous though to then refinance because if you've had a loan only for a couple of years those first few years all you're doing is paying the interest you're not really paying down the principal so maybe in that case maybe you get a line of credit or can you guys speak to that a little bit i know i didn't explain it too well right there yeah no that's that's definitely possible um so depending on the, the situation, the current loan to value, um, there's certainly an option to either do a cash out refinance or potentially take out an equity line of credit or a HELOC, uh, home equity line of credit. Um, generally, the, the main differences between the two is the HELOC is going to most of the time be based on prime rate. So that's the rate you hear a lot of times the Fed raising up and down um, and based on prime rate plus a margin. So that rate okay. is going to be adjustable. Um, depending on where prime rate goes over the near future, that can generally adjust on a monthly basis versus a cash out refinance. You're gonna you know, refinance into generally a, a fixed rate mortgage or, or something fixed for the, the foreseeable future. Um, the nice part about a HELOC is you don't necessarily have to access the money right away. You can have an open line of credit you don't have to pay on it unless you decide to use it. It's almost like a giant credit card um, that okay. should you need it, whether it be for emergency purposes or replacing the kitchen, it's, it's gonna be there in the future. Most you can draw on them for the first 10 years. And then after that first 10 year period, it goes to some kind of uh, fixed amortized payment over the duration of the, the loan. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. Depending on the scenario, it, it will definitely dictate which way the, the client typically leans. Um, HELOCs, standalone HELOCs, we're just looking for a HELOC. They can be a little tougher to come by. Credit unions can be great sources for them, um, but the restrictions on getting them are, are also tend to be a little tougher than your traditional cash out refinance. So it will depend on the client, but certainly an option um, either way. Okay. And then if um, anybody has a question, uh, write it in the chat box so we can go ahead and answer a couple here. We've got a couple more minutes left. I really want to keep this to about 15 or 20 minutes and we'll do more of these um, in the future. But, you know, I was just, so where do you guys see, um, especially since you're on a call, you're in the industry, where do you see for the next six months, would you say from, you know, we're like, like I said before, we're in April, 2020. So what do you think that's going to happen between now and, you know, once the fall hits October, November? Yeah, I, you know, I think, I think the school of thought here is that if, if we take the shelter in place, you know, and relax those rules a bit within the next, say, 30 days, I think we're going to see a much different outcome than if we hold it through until, say, July, something like that, right? Um, and I think what we're going to see is we're going to see rates staying low, because we know that when there's a lot of debt, there's always low interest. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're going to see rates stay pretty low. Uh, I think we're going to see the market sort of stabilize again. If we do this, if we can release this shelter in place in the next 30 days, and I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying if that happens, you know, we could have a strong fall market. We could have a flood of people sort of putting houses on the market, getting ready, getting right back into the swing of things. Um, but if we push this out till July, I think we're going to have a little bit tougher time recovering this year. But then I think as we roll into next year, we're going to see some really strong numbers and we're going to have low interest rates. And I think a really strong market just plowing ahead. Well, yeah. And although this calls mainly about mortgages, especially in the, in the real estate industry, being a realtor, that, that is something that we're seeing is that I've, you know, we've all got some friends now and, you know, clients and things that were maybe waiting that wanted to try to unquote, quote, get that discount. And so we're starting to see people come out of the woodwork that I'm getting, you know, calls from people that have you know, just LinkedIn friends are like, Hey, what's going on? Maybe we should get pre-approved and, and things like that. And it's, you know, something our CEO brought up, which I think is a really good point is if you're going to buy a house, you're still going to buy a house. Now your job, obviously if that went south then you're not, but for the most part, it's just something that just got delayed a little bit. It's not like, you know, where you're taking a cruise where you're like, you know, you know what, actually I might not even ever take this cruise or I might not ever go on this vacation, whatever that might be. If you're going to get a house, you're still probably still going to get a house. Um, and I think a lot of people that were on the fence are now coming out a little bit more, especially seeing the low interest rates, trying to take advantage of the deal out there. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that, I'm glad you guys jumped on the call. Any last few remarks you want to say, Ryan, or anything? Yeah, I, th I think certainly just be ready to roll with the punches. We're, we're, we're in some turbulent times. There's going to be some changes throughout the process. You know, timelines may 
get a little tweaked here and there with with transactions, but we're we're all going to get there at the end of the day. Our market here in the Bay Area, it's we may see some kind of impact, but certainly it's going to stay strong as ever. Um, I, I'm definitely confident of that. We're just going to have some changes. You know, there may be a little bit of pain through the next six months, but we're we're going to come out on the other side, and we're going to have a good, good strong market and low rates. Yeah, and and that's one big thing is as we were mentioning, we were talking a little bit offline before about you know having gone through this in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. There will be times, and I know it's going to happen, guys. <laughs> you guys will say, okay, we need these documents. We'll send them in, and then all of a sudden, underwriting is going to change it because the bank changed it all last minute. And when I was on your end, I hated when that happened, but it's just things are going to change real quickly. So um, there, you know, obviously, there's going to be some foreclosures and forbearances, and we'll get through all that. But um, you know, the the rate, the more solid buyers that are the 700 scores putting 20% down, they should probably be fine. Some of the other ones, it's going to change a little bit. So um, I'll make sure I keep in extra, extra contact with you guys <laughs> as I'm telling all my um, clients to. I'm like, make sure we just keep up on, you know, with the lenders and find, figuring out what's happening because it does change on a weekly basis. But yeah, Thank and I think actually right now too, Eric, and just keep in mind, it's, it's sometimes it's changing on a daily basis, on an hourly yep. basis. Like it's just, we, people have to remain flexible, you know, yep. all of this and know that everybody's working to make it happen. And I know from the agent standpoint, all the way through, you know, a loan touches 60 different people from start to finish. And so everybody's working at different paces with different information. And so patience from home. be key, but I think the market is going to be right for the picking in the, in the next few, you know, few months. Yeah, yeah, that's, well, you and I, the three of us can keep talking for a while because I've just thought of like four more questions I want to ask you guys, but <laughs> we'll, we'll keep doing these calls. Um, to anyone that signed up through the event, right, I'll make sure that I do a YouTube video and then I'll send out the link to everybody as well. And then um, if you want to follow me, hashtag tallest man on real estate, I'm all over social. So you'll see it posted on my LinkedIn and Facebook and I'll figure out Instagram. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much. Really good Thank seeing you. your faces again. Thanks, Thanks Sharon. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Eric. All right, Mark. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good one.